Welcome to my lecture online. In this next example, notice that one of the trigonometric functions in the denominator is actually squared, so we have a cosine squared here. And notice we're still going to use the same trick. Now it gets a little bit more complicated, but it will still work. With this trick, we can now write this as the, as the sum of two separate integrals. So this can now be written as the first integral will become Let's see here, we have the sine squared divided by this. This cancels out, so we end up with the sine of ax divided by the cosine squared of ax dx plus, and then we divide this, so we get the integral of 1 over the sine of ax dx. And let's see here. Now, the first one is not going to be too difficult to integrate. And the reason for that is we can let the denominator equal u, and that, of course that will be then u squared. So we're going to let cosine of ax equal u. So let me write that down here. So for the first one, we're going to let u equal the cosine of ax. That means that du will be equal to uh, negative a times the sine of ax dx because the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine, so we need a negative, and we need the differential a times dx. So we can go ahead and then write that as follows. We want a minus a in the numerator, so that becomes equal to minus 1 over a times the integral of minus a times the sine of ax divided by the cosine square of ax dx, and essentially we have a u squared in the denominator and a du in the numerator. But on the second one, we have a little bit more of a challenge. So for the second one, what we're going to do here is we're going to let, let's see here, ax equal to u, that means that u will be equal to a divided by 2x, and du will be equal to a over 2 dx. Or dx is equal to, let me bring this across, 2 over a times du. All right, so if we do that, what we need then is we end up with 1 over, instead of the sine of ax, we're going to get the sine of 2u. And instead of dx, we're going to write 2 over a, and that can come out, so it's plus 2 over a, and then we have du. So instead of now having 1 over the sine of ax, we have 1 over the sine of 2u. And you may say, well, what advantage did we get out of that? Well, just stay tuned and you'll see why we did that. This is easy to integrate because this is basically u squared in the denominator and du in the numerator, so this becomes equal to minus 1 over a times the integral of u to the minus 2, when I bring this to the numerator, times du. Over here, we have plus 2 over a times the integral of 1 divided by, and I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times the sine of u times the cosine of u times du, and then you realize that this 2 and this 2 cancels out, and we get 1 over a. Now notice, this here is in the exact same form as I would have over there, except instead of cosine squared, I have cosine to the first power, which looks just like what we did in the previous video. So we're able now to easily integrate this as follows. So first we'll integrate this one, so this becomes equal to minus 1 over a, times u to the minus 1 divided by minus 1 plus a constant of integration, we'll call it c1, and then this negative and this negative will cancel out, and over here we end up with plus 1 over a times the integral, and here we're going to write the sine squared of u plus the cosine squared of u divided by the sine of u times the cosine of u du, and then we're going to write this one as two separate integrals. Now here we can simplify this, so this becomes equal to a 1 over a u, and remember u for the first integral was cosine of ax, so we'll make that replacement, 
and we have plus a constant of integration, and here this will be plus 1 over a times two integrals, the integral of the first one, which will be the sine of u over the cosine of u du, plus the integral of the cosine of u divided by the sine of u du. And let me close the bracket here. And then we realize that, well, the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine, and the derivative of the sine is the cosine. So actually, what we have here is we have a du over u, and here, if we put a negative in front of that, a negative in front of this one here, oh, now I can't do that. I need to put a negative 1 in front of that one. Okay, now we can go ahead and integrate this and integrate this, and we can simplify this to be equal to 1 over a times our u for our first integral was the cosine of ax plus a constant of integration, and here, this is plus 1 over a times, this will be a negative 1 times the natural log of the denominator, which is the cosine of u, plus the natural log of the denominator, which is the sine of u, like this, and close the bracket, plus another constant of integration. Of course, we can combine those two constants and call them just c. And then we can simplify that a little bit more. So when I come over here, this is equal to our first result, 1 over a times the cosine of ax, plus 1 over a times, and now we can write this as the natural log of the sine divided by the natural log of the cosine. So the natural log of the sine of u over the cosine of u, and we have a constant of integration that's combining c1 and c2. And then that can be written as the tangent of u, but then remember, here we let 2u equals ax, or u equals a over 2x. So then finally we can say this is equal to 1 over a times the cosine of ax, plus 1 over a times the natural log of the tangent. And instead of using u, we can write ax over 2 as the angle plus a constant of integration, and this then becomes the result of that particular integral. So again, summarizing what we just did, just like in the previous video, we changed the 1 to the sum of the sine square plus the cosine square. When we simplify that, we notice that this can easily be integrated by looking at this as the denominator being equal to u, or u squared, and the numerator is then almost a differential that we're looking for. We simply need a minus a. So we have to account for the minus a right here, and again, divide by minus a. For the second integral, we end up with uh, 1 over the sine of ax, and that's a bit of a problem. So what we did was we changed ax to 2u, and the du then became 2 over a du. So this is, or the dx became 2 over a du. And then we write the sine of 2u as twice the product of the sine of u times the cosine of u. And once we have in this format, again, we use that same trick as we did before, and we can then integrate the second integral as well. And that's how it's done.